Interest rate speculation is scaring the pants off people. Recession talk is scaring the pants off people. And now election talk is starting to scare the pants off people. And it shouldn't. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Rickard less, but I'm still mad about money. Okay, interest rate speculation. Yesterday I'm doing a recording for a, a small business uh, production for Optus and the woman there who's very intelligent is so worried about interest rates going up, I, I, possibly she has a, a, a big loan, and I said to her, don't worry about interest rates. They will go up, but they're not going to go up like they are in the US. US is expecting about 10 interest rate rises in a row. Mind you, I think the media is exaggerating. I think in reality, it, they won't go up 10 months in a row, and they probably won't go up as much as people are expecting. But the bottom line is this, interest rates are ridiculously low. They will rise. And if you really are worried about paying higher interest rates in the future, have a look at your loan. And if you're paying 3% or more, consider this, you could be paying 2%. Just go to one of the websites like Rate City or whatever, Lendy or Finder, and find yourself a lower interest rates. There are 2% home loans still around right now. So if they raise interest rates, it'll take four interest rate rises to get to your 3%. So be smart, don't be scared. Accept interest rates are going to go up, but don't be, let your pants be taken away from you because you're scared. Now the second one, recession talk. Seriously? Recession talk? Look, I do not believe central banks are going to be stupid when it comes to interest rates. They will raise them and they will raise them at a rate that avoids a recession actually happening. Provided the Ukraine war can end over the next, next month or two, that will lead to lower oil prices. That will lead to a lot of positives you know, being factored into inflation and ultimately the economy will benefit from lower oil prices. Uh, and if provided we don't get a resurgence in the pandemic and it's more like Omicron where it's manageable, what we're going to see in the second half of this year is a really big economic boom right around the world. You know, China will be not locking up its citizens anymore. It will be starting to supply like it used to before the um, coronavirus came to town. And all of a sudden, things will become cheaper, things will get in better supply situations. And therefore, that's why a lot of central banks believe this terrible inflation that the media is actually going really mad about will eventually start dissipating and coming down. And that will mean a lot of the fear around high interest rates causing recession will become less of a threat. So let me tell you this, do not worry about a recession this year. I reckon don't even worry about 2023. 2024 is a possibility. That's when I think I'll be getting more defensive in my investing portfolio for myself and for my clients. Might start late 2023 to be ready for 2024, but give, it, give the economy here and around the world a chance to have that boom it really needs to have as a consequence of the coronavirus eventually leaving town. Now, finally, election talk. There are people out there who believe elections are really bad for the stock market. Well, I've actually done some homework. Historically, guess what? The stock market still goes up in, in that period before an election. Not much, 1, 1.2%, but there's no massive sell-off of stocks. Some particular stocks can and industries can be affected by some policy initiatives. Um, I think you know, real estate was negatively affected before the last federal election when Bill Shorten was talking about taking away negative gearing or changing it and reducing the capital gains discount. Sure, those sorts of real estate uh, related companies might have been affected as a consequence of those policy uh, pre uh, possibilities. But after the election, there's like an average 5% rebound after an election. So in many ways, if there is a bit of a sell-off in the pre-election period, it's a buying opportunity if you look at history. And given the fact that I believe, as I pointed out in the previous story, that I think there's an economic boom coming in the second half of 2022, that's going to be good for corporate profits. That's going to be good ultimately for stock prices. So you don't have to be so worried such that you're losing your pants. I'm Peter Switzer and I'm mad about money. Shh.